On October 8, 1961, a large earthquake caused by volcanic activity forced the evacuation of the eastern settlement on the island of Tristan de Cunha, an island off of the west coast of Africa. By October 10th, the heaving ground had created a volcanic cone and the decision was made to evacuate all of the islanders. To aid in the relief efforts for the islanders, the island of St. Helena decided to issue a semi-postal or charity issue to raise money to aid in the release efforts. The St. Helena Post Office took four stamps that were currently in use by Tristan de Cunha and overprinted them with St. Helena Tristan Relief and added a surcharge to each of them of three pence, six pence, nine pence, and one shilling sterling. Now it's that last word that's important. They overprinted it in sterling denominations. However, the original denominations were expressed in South African cents. When the Home Office in London found out about this commingling of currencies on the stamp, they said, We are not amused, and ordered a halt to the sale of the stamps. On October 19th, after just one week, the stamps were withdrawn from sale after selling just 434 sets. Today, as you might expect, that set is rather scarce, especially found used on cover. And today that set of stamps has a Scott catalog value of $7,600 in mint condition and $3,200 used. In Belgium, from the inception of their postal service, mail delivery had been seven days a week. However, in 1884, the Catholic Party came into power, and with that came a new Catholic postmaster. And he argued that if people wanted to keep uh, Sunday holy, they should not be forced to accept Sunday delivery of mail if they didn't like that. Thus was born the Dominical label. The word Dominical meaning having to do with the Lord. This Dominical label was just a short tab, a perforated tab, uh, attached to the bottom of the regular postage stamp and it was inscribed no Sunday delivery and if you were one of those who felt it blasphemous for your mail to be delivered on Sunday you left the label on there when you mailed the letter and it would not be delivered on Sunday if you didn't care whether your mail was delivered on Sunday or not you tore off the label before attaching the stamp and then your mail would be delivered on Sunday. The last stamps with Dominican labels was issued in 1913. After World War I ended, Sunday mail delivery was discontinued and along with that the necessity for Dominical labels. Now over in Bulgaria, six-day delivery of mail was the norm and in 1925 the government decided that if people wanted to have their mail delivered on Sundays and holidays, they could pay a nominal fee for that privilege. And so in 1925 came the Sunday delivery stamps, which was mandatory to be used if you wanted your mail delivered on Sunday or a holiday. These stamps were used from 1925 to 1941 and the proceeds were used to maintain a sanatorium for the employees of uh, postal, telegraph, and uh, telecommunications. It seems even back then, going postal was a thing. Now, in 1861, as you probably know, Germany was not yet united as a nation. It consisted of a confederation of 41 cities and states, some of which had their own uh, postal systems like Prussia, Hanover, Saxony. The little town of Bergedorf was within the confederation, but it was a condominium. That is, it was jointly owned by two cities, Hamburg and Lübeck. And since it was owned by two cities, Neither of those two had authority to run a uh, postal service for Bergedorf. So Bergedorf decided to form their own postal system. And when Hamburg and Lübeck 
started issuing postage stamps in 1859, Bergedorf followed in 1861 with their first set. Their only set for that matter, it was a set of five stamps. The central design of each of the stamps was a composite coat of arms, half and half, half Hamburg and half Lübeck. And it consisted of five denominations between one half and four Hamburg shillings. Now, from the beginning of the postage stamp era, it was the norm to print different denominated stamps in different colors as an aid for postal workers in determining uh, the franking of the letters. Bergendorf took this concept a step further. Not only was each denomination in a different color, each stamp was of a different size, with the smallest stamp being the half shilling and stepping up larger and larger up to the four shilling. I am not aware of any other stamp issue produced this way with each value of a different size. If you know of any, let me know in the comments below. So that does it for another installment of Philatelic Tidbits. If you'll stick around for just another minute, I have a viewer list to share with you. This comes from Nysark Sutoria, who wanted to share all of the Mahatma Gandhi stamps issued by India. And that will be our closing slideshow. So stick around, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, and press the bell icon so you can be notified of all future episodes as they go up. So thank you all once again for watching. This is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you all happy stamping.